I'm just going to say it's not attention seeking, but I have ADHD. So if at any point, it's not attention seeking. So if at any point I forget what I'm saying, it's just my brain like buffering. Also, a few trigger warnings. I can see there's some children in here. Um, I might say some bad words. So I'm going to try not to say the really bad ones, but don't repeat it in school. Um, also, there will be some themes that might be upsetting. For example, mention of sleep paralysis and astral projection and um, my parents being disappointed in me. Um, not you, kids. You, you are fine. Um, yeah, so I'm convinced that my African dad hears things very differently to how they're said. For example, Dad, I'm off to the cinema with Mike. So now you are opening your legs to different, different men. Eh? The other day, Dad, I made some garlic bread in the air fryer. Do you want to try some? This is why you don't have a husband. Every day, garlic bread in the air fryer, deliveroo, deliveroo, deliveroo. This is why all of the men are deliverooing themselves out of your life. More recently, Dad, I'm thinking of getting a tongue piercing. What do you think? Tomorrow morning, you'll be on the first flight to Nigeria, even if I have to fly the plane myself. Now, my dad, he's just very protective of me, like I've been through a lot, you know, life. Um, I moved to Cardiff from London a year ago. Anyone here from Cardiff originally? Woo! Let's make that louder, yeah? And um, where's everyone else from? <laughs> Wait, is Barry not part of Cardiff? <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll see myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I moved to Cardiff. Anyways, F Cardiff, because... I experienced racism when I was first there. And I think it's safe to say I'm the only black person here, so I can, you all have to laugh at these jokes. Um, so this was during Pride last year. I was sitting with my mate at um, Spoons, and this lady stuck her hands in my afro. So I was like, excuse me, don't do that, please. And she goes to me, it's okay, I'm a hairdresser. Now with that logic, if I'm a gynecologist, does that mean exactly it doesn't exactly so after that experience i was like you know i'm gonna get a boyfriend i'm gonna get in a relationship i'm gonna really like assimilate myself here so i met a guy from panaf anyone here from panaf i don't like you if you're from panaf i i really i don't like panaf people i've got a problem with you lot yeah i'll see you outside after this um oh i'm from east london yeah you don't want to try me fam um he used to call me aggressive, I don't know why, and masculine. Um, for example, one day at work, I got some really good news and I was working from home. So I said, yes, get in. And he was like, that's so aggressive, that's so masculine. Let me show you what I really wanted to do. Yeah, get in. But I didn't do that because I was being ladylike and poised. So F him. Anyways, we broke up because he cheated on me. I don't know why. But... Um, <laughs> I jumped on, you know, Tinder, Hinge, full of bums and minge. And um, I met this one guy called Harry, and everything was going so well until he said to me, I haven't tried a black one yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I am not like one of those limited edition samples of beer you order from like come on like don't be weird so I came off that I was like you know what I'm just gonna be celibate and focus on me is anyone else going on that sort of journey right now Woo! Woo! me too not by choice like if I could uh, you know um, so yeah I'm just celibate now just focusing on myself and that sort of thing I actually quit smoking as well anyone here smokes Woo! now the reason why I quit smoking is because every time I pull a cigarette out of my, po I mean a pack out of my pocket. There's always someone that goes, oh, can I have a cigarette, please? Can I have one, please? Can I have one? I've not even lit my cigarette. And people are begging for a cigarette. Like, give me a chance to enjoy my cigarette first. Honestly. And then they've got the cheek to say, I've got a pound. Can I buy one off you? It doesn't cost a pound. You can't buy cigarettes in singles. That being said, I do, in fact, have a pound. And I'll buy one off someone at the end of this. Um... So I mentioned sleep paralysis earlier. Does, has anyone ever experienced that? Can someone quickly come and explain what it is, please? Or shout it. Louder. It's when you're paralyzed in sleep. 
Exactly. Thank you. So it's basically when you're asleep, you can't move your legs, you can't move, you can't shout. It all comes out like a little whisper, like me, 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 for example. And um, yeah, you can't move at all. So one time, I think this was about a month ago, I was on the way to my friend's wedding in London, and I'm on the coach. And with sleep paralysis, it can be triggered if you sleep on your back. And obviously, I'm on the coach, I'm relaxed. So this is basically me on the coach. Just, you know, my seatbelt, the coach is moving. I'm chilled, and then I go into sleep paralysis. I try to alert the driver. I'm like, driver, driver, but it's coming out like, me, 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 me. And then, this time it was completely different because I saw a light in the middle of my forehead and I left my body through my forehead. I know this sounds crazy, don't call 111. I know it sounds mental, but I literally left my body and I saw my body in the seat. It was the craziest experience ever. And I used to think that people that believed in astral projection were crazy. I thought they were nuts. I thought they were kooky, but actually they're telling the truth. And we are all just spirits inside an avatar. So I can literally take off my shoe and lick it, and it doesn't matter. Actually, don't do that. I'm not recommending that. But it doesn't matter because this isn't real. So yeah, that's the end of my um, noise, and you can go back to drinking your drinks. I can't pick up the pound. <laughs> <laughs>